Anyways, uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. This is my three. This is my fourth one of these I've done back to back. So, uh, ready for ready for this one to, to be done. So, with that, let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> so, the LC two thirty one and two forty one. As I mentioned, we released this product back in uh, September of last year at the, at WebTech. So, if you were at WebTech and stopped by our booth. And you saw this product. This is the product that we're going to be talking about today. Um, it was a demo that had the water filling up and pumping down and all that stuff. Um, since then, the uh, the product has, has taken off, not as not as fast as we we hoped, but hoping after the day and you guys see this that you'll you'll be uh, out there promoting and pushing it. Um, now I will tell you if you have bought our SLC DLC control panels in the past. We have obsoleted those partners out of our system. They were supposed to be obsoleted out of last year, but something happened. I still don't understand it, but they ended up not being obsoleted. So you were still able to order them and we're still selling them. They have now been obsoleted out of the system. Uh, this product replaced the SLC and DLC panel ranges. If you still need one, um, if it was quoted prior to us, uh, you know, obsoleting them completely you know, work with your DSM but if you still need something like that we can do a custom quote and get you uh, get you one of those panels but as a standard product they're not offered anymore so the SLC and DLC um, excuse me LC 231 LC 241 so let's go into what these things are so this overview this presentation we're going to be covering what the product is talk about some of the applications but mainly focusing on the key features and benefits of this product so 231 versus a 241, what is the difference? This black box that you see on your screen, that is the LC231. This is a Grundfest box product. And what that means is when you order it, it comes in a Grundfest box. It was built by Grundfest. Well, obviously it's designed by us, but it is a true turnkey Grundfest product. Um, the LC241 is, sorry, the mouse is, here we go. Our LC241 product is this modular style panel over here on the right. Uh, the interface, the controller, is virtually the same between the two devices. The reason I say virtually is because uh, the LC has a little less input output capabilities than the LC241, but the controller, the interface is the same. We're just taking it and building a modular style panel versus this wall mount style panel. Uh, the wall mount style panel, the LC231, is a NEMA 4, excuse me, NEMA 3R enclosure. Um, now, and, and although you could mount it outside, we recommend that you still cover the box. Um, the LC241 is a modular style panel and a Type 4X enclosure. Uh, and it's got some of the standard features that you would see at it, uh, particularly water utility stations, uh, but where you have a solid outer door, an inner deck front beacon light, external buzzer, things like that. So we're going to go through all the features, but I wanted to sit on the, on the um, beginning of this, <clears throat> explain what the differences are in these two products. All right, so the key features, depth by PowerPoint, sorry for all the bullets, but they're, uh, they're actually all really important to this product. So right off the bat, this product will support one or two pump applications only. Uh, you can the product for the path. So if you're doing a one pump, application you need to order the one pump variant do not order the two pump and try to one excuse me run one pump off of it because you'll get a bunch of alarms for that second pump because it's not wired in um, so if you're trying to run a three pump application this is not the controller for you we designed the system these controls excuse me we designed this controller and this control panel range to be for more of the low cost basic control pump excuse me basic control applications. Um, the controller is a true Grundfuss product. The SLC DLC product range was not a true Grundfuss built product. This LC controller we developed, we built it, we designed it over three years. Uh, so it is a true Grundfuss product in that sense. Um, so one to two pump applications only. Uh, these are not your pump or a filling application, and that's something we haven't had before. We have our booster application, our booster control, but if we're just trying to do a basic tank fill application, we've been able to do that with a booster pack. This controller, you can set it up 
to be either for empty applications like a lift station or a stormwater, dewatering, or tank fill applications. <clears throat> the controller is designed to run a DOL or ACL or direct online or across the line starting applications only. What I mean by that is the product that you see, the box product, is it uses a DOL starter. It's built into that box. That little black box has starters built into it, as does the LC241 that's got cross the line starters in that as well. But we can build custom versions of this. So, for instance, we've sold a few of them here recently that were using single to three phase applications using VFDs. Um, so, a VFD, you can take single phase and spit out three phase. So, we don't have it as a standard variant in this product line, but we can build a custom panel. And because all we're doing is telling the drive when to run and when to stop, we can still use this control system. It's just for start and stop applications. So soft starters, you can do it with uh, as well. But if you're trying to run a variable speed application where maybe you're trying to maintain a level, this controller will not do that. Okay, It is for on-off control only. Uh, we've got an intuitive LED display. And what that means is you can see on your screen there, we've got you know, green lights and the pump has a little arrow. Pump 2's got an arrow above it showing it's running and what condition the pump's in and all that. If the pump goes into alarm, that pump turns red. So the LEDs change color based on what's going on at the, the, uh, on the screen. It also shows uh, the water level and uh, on the right hand side, if you had floats, it's also going to show you which floats tip. Um, we have this, this fourth bullet down here, effective protection of pumps and wastewater pit. What were we trying to, I had to take the word wastewater out of that because it's any type, any pumping application. What we're referring to in protection of your pumps is, and we'll get into this, we monitor thermals and seals with this, or just thermals or just seals or whatever. Um, but we also have a built-in phase monitor. So this controller monitors the incoming uh, three phase or single phase voltage. And we're monitoring it for phase loss and phase reversal only. In the last um, uh, training we just did, there was a question about, does it monitor for voltage imbalance? No. It only is monitoring for phase loss and phase reversal. And what that does is that prevents us from having to use an external phase monitor. Um, we're also monitoring current draw in this control system using current transformers, CTs. Um, in both models, we're monitoring one phase of the pump to look at how much current it's consuming. So we can trigger alarms for overcurrent, undercurrent, but also protecting the pumps in, in the process. One of the functions of this control panel right off the bat that our competitors aren't doing. So when you're getting into the the, uh, the Stacon and the Primex, the, the, the low end quick ship type panels like the inexpensive, they're not doing current monitoring. Uh, that's one of the unique things that we do in this control system. We can access this controller through our Grunfus Go remote. So our Grunfus Go app, excuse me. Um, and we do it through our Bluetooth smart connection. Now, I've been in this controls thing for a while, and uh, if you have any experience with it, any of our connected products, you might be familiar with our MI301. Uh, we call it, a, some people call it a dongle, it's called a remote. It's this little black remote that um, we sell that your, your smart device, your phone or iPad or whatever you had that would connect via Bluetooth would connect to that remote, and you would use that remote to talk to our devices. That remote goes out the door. We don't need it for this product. We can connect directly from our smart device, tablet, whatever. Any device that can have the Grunfus Go app on it and Bluetooth can connect with this product. Um, so that's a big thing. We took the MI301. And just so everyone's aware, any future products that we are releasing that have Bluetooth functionality will also have this, what we're calling Bluetooth Smart. They will not require the MI301 dongle anymore. That's all new products coming out. Uh, easy to set up this product right out of the box. So either one, uh, you can set it up through the keypad. You don't need the app. So we have a lot of concern from contractors saying, well, I just want to be able to plug this thing up, set it up, and go on about my day. Perfectly fine. You can do that through the keypad. And it's a basic setup. It takes about, honestly, about five minutes to set the controller up. But it's limiting you to the type of functionality that you can do with it. What I mean by that is, um, if we're setting up a, a transducer, um, and we'll get into that in just a second, but uh, 
it's going to limit you to a certain range that you can use. And then app, you can go in there and customize it to be whatever range you want. Um, so you can set it up from the keypad or through the app, and we'll go into that. Um, we can connect to a SCADA system via our Grunfa CIM modules. So these devices will accept the CIM modules plugged in directly to them. And we are now supporting GRM. And I'll get into that in a few slides as well. The screen itself, the keypad, has a built-in 80 decibel buzzer. Now on the LC241, because it's a modular panel, if that outer door is closed, you're not going to hear that buzzer. So we have an external buzzer on that panel. You can't see it in that picture, but it's got a uh, push to silence on the side as well. Uh, the controller supports both flow switch and pressure transducer control. Um, so, whereas before the SLC DLC line, you had to order the panel for float control applications and order a panel for pressure transducer control applications. This controller supports either. And you can set it up to be analog or digital from the keypad when you're setting it up, or you can do it through the app. Um, the question that's coming up is, will a submersible pressure transducer also use backup ball floats? Yes. So um, through the keypad, when you set it up, if you're setting it up from the keypad, it sets it up only for a pressure transducer. But you can use the app, go in there and, and set up a high level backup with low level backup. You can set it up for two float, one float, or no float backup applications with a submersible pressure transducer. Um, configurable input output terminals, the IO terminals. Um, so we have ability to configure IO on these devices um, to do custom functions and monitor custom things. Um, the controller itself has a USB uh, landing spot on it. And what we're doing that for is for firmware updates. So those of you who have been uh, selling our dedicated controls or CU362 controller for um, a number of years, we know that that product is, we, we're always coming out with new functions and features for it. But to do firmware updates, this is a bit uh, cumbersome to do on that product. If you've never done one, it, it is very cumbersome. This product, when we come out and do firmware updates, you load the firmware on a USB stick, you plug it into the back of the controller, you cycle power, once you turn it back on, it downloads the firmware and you're done. Um, it's that easy. I've done a few of them myself, and it is actually really simple. Um, so that was one of the functions here. Now, one of the things I want to point out on this product is we are not, we didn't come out with this product to replace the CU362 or dedicated controls. That wasn't the point of this product. The point of this product was for us to have a Grunfuss product in that lower priced market, um, where, it's, where the dedicated controls wasn't needed. So some of the functionality like flow monitoring, PID control that the CU362 could do, this controller will not do any of that. Now, this is just basic control functionality. It's got some really cool things I'm going to show you, but it's not a, it wasn't designed to replace that. It's designed to meet that medium to low end uh, price market range. Okay. So let's talk about some of the features and benefits of these products. So on the LC231, as I mentioned, it, the interface is identical almost, well, it says LC231, but the keypad and the control is virtually identical to the LC241. So they're both empty and filling applications. Um, there are two variants to the LC231. There's a one pump or a two pump version. And remember, you have to order which one you want for the pump control. Um, this device will support single and three phase applications. I must note, and it says it in our price book, for a three phase 460 volt application, it requires a neutral, which is not very common here in the US. Um, and we understand that. So um, we, we, have a, we have the LC241 that can meet if you, if you don't have a neutral available um, at the station for those applications. But it will support single phase 120 volt up to three phase 460 volt applications. Um, very low current range though, uh, that it's, um, that can work with. So when we're talking about horsepower of pumps, uh, and we'll get into this in a couple slides, but th this product, I, I don't see it being utilized that, that frequently in the water utility sector, only because it's handling really low current radius of the pumps. And we typically see larger pumps in the water utility. But if you can make it work, great. Use it for those applications. Uh, the bottom of the, of the product, the box product, you see those little cord grips, those black cord grips. 
on the bottom. The U.S. version doesn't have those. We actually have caps. We have plastic caps on those. Because here in the U.S., we don't use cord grips. We use conduits. Um, so there's a standard conduit threaded ports at the bottom of that product. Um, certified built-in motor protection and current measurement. So the contactors and everything, it's a control panel. So the contactors and everything, if you pull the cover off the four screws, you would see a contactor mounted right there, or two contactors if it's a duplex. But we also use the current transformers in there, not only to monitor current draw, but for motor protection. So we were certified through UL with this product that we can use those CTs to be the overload protection. So we do not have a physical overload in this device that needs to be uh, reset manually. Okay. Um, you can set it up to be reset manually, but it doesn't require manual reset. Um, again, Bluetooth Smart, direct connection, uh, set up with control, uh, excuse me. We can get the information out through CIM modules, uh, easy setup and commission. The LC241, again, same controller, um, now moving into a Type 4X thermoplastic enclosure. And it's got stainless steel latches there on the side that are pad lockable. Um, this product as a standalone um, product has the beacon light, the external buzzer, but it, we don't have the um, UL motor protector with the CTs. We are monitoring current draw with this, this unit, but you can see on the, on the door there we have combination starters. So we have a built-in solid state overload. Um, so if that pump does trip out on the overload for that, you have to manually reset that, that overload on this, this, uh, this model. Um, it will work with ball floats, transducers, applications. This variant, we have a, a one and two pump variant of this, of this uh, product, and it will cover single and three phase applications. Now, a note about the single phase, the only variant standard now i say standard because we can build anything custom with these products um, the single phase variant uh, is for our two horsepower seg single phase pump so it has the external capacitors everything but it's size specific to that two horsepower seg pump uh, so that is our standard variant for those uh, the three phase variants it doesn't require the neutral on this that's that's only for the lc231 the three phase variant, we, we got kind of smart with this. We're using a multiple voltage primary transformer. Let me explain what that means. So the control power transformer inside this box can be wired into be from 208, 230, or 460. So when you order a variant of this product, it will work on all three of those voltages. You just land the wire on the transformer of which voltage that you're using when you go to install it. And there's a there's a node inside of there, the wire's hanging, it's capped off. So when the installer goes in there, he'll see that. They'll show him a diagram of where he needs to lay in the wire for that voltage. So what that means, and we, we uh, support up to 32 amps with these variants. So what that means is if you had one of these stocked on the shelf, let's just say our 12 to 32 amp variant, if you had that on the shelf and you had an application for 240 volt, you could use that one panel, or if it's 460, you need the same panel. So it's, it works on all three of those voltages. Um, integrated Bluetooth Smart, same functionality as, as the other one. So really, we're going to more of a modular panel now. The difference in this controller and dedicated controls is that the dedicated controls, we, we had the ability not only to build it in control panels, but we would sell the components loose. So we could actually go and, and do retrofits and stuff with that. This controller is not sold like that. Um, we sell a turnkey panel for this control line. So uh, if you have a custom variant outside of what we offer right now, we, well, I'll, I'll get into how we do custom variants. But if you have something, let's say, goes outside of what our standard custom options are, and you want to run 100 horsepower on soft starts using this controller, we would sell the entire panel for those applications. So we're not going to sell just the controller on this application. Um, and, and that has to do with, a, a, there's a few reasons why we do it, but um, ultimately though, at the end of the day, if you're dealing with a basic control application and dedicated controls is pushing the, pushing the price too high, get a quote from the CSC using this, this controller. Say I want an LC241 that I just need to turn pumps on and off with some floats, but they're, they're 50 horsepower. Now, can you give me a quote on that? We can quote you on, on whatever you need. 
<clears throat> so going to the current ranges uh, that these products support, uh, if you look at this diagram here on the far left, the light blue, uh, di um, the light blue variants there, that's our LC241 for the single phase applications. So that's for that two horsepower SCG grinder only. Um, so that's what's going to cover that. The LC231 in the middle, the dark blue. This is where the product, um, when we had it certified by UL, UL took, was able to handle much higher currents, but when UL got a hold of it, it they dropped our rating down considerably. Um, so for the one pump variant of the LC231, you can run up to 9.6 amps off of it, which at, I think 460 is like five horsepower. Um, the two horsepower variant, or excuse me, the two pump variant, the duplex version, you can run up to 7.6 amps per pump, right? So still a low current range, but you know, for those fractional to low horsepower, it could be a great uh, fit for those applications. When you get into the modular style, you get into a higher current range, um, you get into the LC241. And we really have three current ranges, one to five amp, three to 12 amps, and eight to 32 amps. Those are what we call our standard variants, all right? And I'm gonna explain the standard variants as we go through here. But uh, we have those in one and two pump application. All right, the um, keypad. Well, the reason the you know the, the new keypad it's got LEDs, it has little lights that come up. It's like a almost like a check engine light kind of stuff it comes up on the on the screen that will illuminate when there's problems and things like that. Uh, but the the biggest thing I want you to focus on is the the number one and two there on the keypad. If you look above that, it says on off auto. That is a built in 808. It's a button. I, I, and uh, it's your hand off auto control. We've had a lot of pushback from customers that say, you know what, we want a physical HOA switch. And technically, we could do it in a custom variant, but it would be quite expensive to do it. It's better to use this button. And I'm going to explain one of the functions. And once I explain this function, when I, when, we have had, you know, that, that HU customers have started to warm up to what we've done. It's a smart HOA, and I'm going to explain here in the, in the next couple slides. But uh, it's built an HOA switch. The um, buttons on the on the right, the little soft key buttons, there's a one, there's a button right there on the right that looks like a Wi-Fi symbol. That's actually the Bluetooth button. And that's the button you need to be able to have access to to push, to pair up with the device for the first time. Once you paired with the device in your Grunfus Go app, the app members set the things. So if you pull out to a site and want to access the station from your truck, if it's pouring down raining, you know, we go up to about 40 feet with Bluetooth. So you can theoretically just access it right there from your truck, get into it, uh, see what's going on at your station. That's the app there on the right hand side, what it looks like once you're logged in. Um, Empty and filling applications. So, um, depending on your combination of floats and whatever you're doing uh, to, to run the system, you can run it in either way. When we're setting up the uh, control system, as I mentioned now, it's not going to show meters on the right hand side. It's a screenshot I had to use from our European presentation. But you can see um, on the right hand side, you can set it up from the keypad, or you can use the app on the left hand side, which will walk you through a setup wizard. Map basic questions about your station, your voltage, your folded amps, things like that. Inside the control, one of the functionalities is storing the last 20 alarm and uh, warnings in the system. So um, it, uh, the last 20 events get stored in there and you can extract that data through the Grunfisco app. When you connect, you can see the last events that have occurred at the station. Um, going back to the HOA command, the button, so when I said a smart HOA button, so in using that soft key versus a manual HOA switch, first off, to put it in hand operation, you got to hold the button down for three seconds. So you, re you reduce the risk of pushing the button and accidentally short cycling the pump. So you hold it in for three seconds, it puts the pump into hand. That option on the left-hand side is done in the settings screen in the app. And it's an option you can turn it on or off. You don't have to use it. Um, but I think most customers would want to use this. And it's called automatic return. So if you enable that option, what that means is when the pump goes into hand, if it's been running for, and we can configure it for up to 10 minutes, 
So let's just say I set it up for five minutes. If, if I leave the pump in hand, and I know nobody's ever done this, right? And I, I'm just joking, I've done it myself. Um, you put a pump in the hand, you get sidetracked with something else, close up the panel, you get a call, you gotta go somewhere else. I've left pumps in hand and had my aha moment, pulled a U-turn, went back, thankfully, and caught it before we ran the pump station down and burned the pump up, very expensive. So uh, what this function allows it to do is if you put it in hand through that button, and you forget about it for that period of time that you have on there, it will automatically go back into either off or auto, depending on how you set it up. So that five minute application, if I put it in hand, I got sidetracked, left the station, and I went, oh crap, I, I never put it back into auto. If I had this function set up to return to auto after five minutes, it would automatically go back into auto and everything would be fine. So it's a safety feature and uh, a lot of customers have appreciated that function that's built into the control. We also have a function for maximum number of restarts. So if the station's out running and it keeps restarting itself based on thermals or, you know, keeps tripping out on thermal failure or whatever, um, we can take it offline. Anti-seizing function for periodic uh, exercising of the pumps is configurable. So if you got storm water or low flow stations, the pumps aren't running often enough, get limestone and stuff built up inside of the uh, balloon. <clears throat> to the IO terminals, the input output terminals. Excuse me. The uh, LCQ31, uh, this is really what the difference is in terms of IO. It doesn't have too many input and output terminals. It does have two 24 volt power supplies for external sensors, and those power supplies are rated up to 250 milliamps. So they're pretty big. Um, then at the very bottom there, you see two times overheat protection. And I need to, I keep forgetting, I need to update that slide. Um, it should be overheat and seal protection, so uh, thermal or seal protection for the pumps. And what we're doing is, in this control system for both of them, for the LC241 and LC231, we are looking for normally closed contacts in series. So in our grunt for submersible line, and I'm not talking about our sensor version that has the water and oil sensor. In our, our submersible pumps, we have a thermal circuit um, that wired back to the, uh, we have thermal common and a seal. Uh, we run the thermals and seals in common into this control box. And what we're doing is when that circuit is uh, open, which means it's a failure of either one, it immediately trips out on thermal and it shuts the pump down. Well, then there's a cool down period in the settings. The default is 40 minutes, but you can adjust that. If you say, okay, at 20 minutes, that pump should have cooled down and reset those thermals. <clears throat> it hasn't reached it, hasn't set it up within a minute. It then switches the alarm to seal fail. Okay. But if you're using just a pump that just has thermals and no seals, you could set it up in the app to do just thermals that way too. So that's how we're doing, that's how we determine uh, thermals and seals when they're wired in series in this control system. And that goes for both products. The LC241. Uh, the terminals are it's a little terminal uh, box that uh, gets mounted in the uh, the back of the, uh, the control panel. All the wire terminations are made with the uh, uh, spring style terminals that we use on the IO 351B, which you either love or, or hate them. You got some relay outputs, and you've got uh, 24 volt power supply again, 250 milliamps for uh, for external uh, uh, sensors. Sorry. <clears throat> if you need additional I.O., the LC241 is the only model that can uh, it's an extension module. Because the LC231, that box product, it comes as it is. You cannot change. You cannot do any customization to that product. This, if you order a, a panel and you need additional inputs and outputs, you need to order it up front. So in other words, if you're out there and you decide in three months, hey, I want to monitor all this other stuff, we cannot retrofit this module out in the field. The firmware, everything has to be changed at the station. So that's why we, we don't, and not to mention there's not enough room in the LC panels to fit in an additional I.O. model. So, but it does have the ability to be expandable. On uh, both products, we have what's called a configurable I.O. or a CIO. You know, Renfus, we love acronyms. Um, the CIO is a configurable input output. It's what, something we started doing on a lot of our products. What it is, is you can set up this input. By default, it comes in set up as an analog input. 
but it could also be a digital input. It could be a input to monitor a PT100 or PT1000 thermal varying resistance sensor, or it could be a digital output. So depending on how you set it up, you can set it up for all four of those functions kind of one input. The other thing that I want you to uh, take away is on the app, I think is really cool. Um, only because I know I've been in the field wiring a panel and it would be really great to know sometimes where where these wires need to land. When you select an input, you can go back in the app at any time and see this. Uh, if you want to see where wires need to land or where they are landed, they put a little uh, picture diagram up there to show you right where to land those wires. So there's no, uh, no question there. <clears throat> um, historical data. So we are um, looking at uh, latest runtime, operating hours, number of starts, average starts for 24 hours. All this information, lots of really important information for your customers, especially when they're troubleshooting. We're also looking at things like energy consumption. So we've got voltage and current, uh, runtime, total times, all that stuff. So when you log into the app, you can see all this information. You can't get this information from the keypad, though. That was another question I kind of asked. You have to get it through the app. So if I'm an operator and <clears throat> I'm out there and I, I want to get all that information, but I don't want to sit there and write every value down, in the app, when you log into the station, you can immediately click the bottom that says reports. From that reports, it generates a, uh, a consolidated report of all the information that's being stored in the controller, including the alarms and warnings log. So at the bottom of the report are the last 20 alarms and warnings. You can then take that report, email it right from your smart device, or you can save it as a PDF, whatever you want to do with it. But it's a really quick and easy way to get to a station, get all the information out of it, see what's been going on, and, and keep moving on. <clears throat> that information can also be pulled over to a SCADA system. Um, we have the profiles lists for these controllers for various protocols that uh, if your customer is using a third-party SCADA, they can pull this information back into. Right now, we support Modbus RTU and TCP. I know it says only RTU there. Um, we support BACnet and BACnet IP, Profibus, and now GRM. Okay. And what we're doing to support these protocols is if you look at the image on the right-hand side, the CIM module, our communication modules, plug right into the back of these controllers. On the LC241, the top image, that cover comes off. The little black cover's got one screw, pops off. CIM module plugs in right down there. We got rid of those little, um, if you've ever plugged in a CIM module into one of our booster packs or dedicated controls, it's a pain. Like it's, it's got these little tabs that you have to snap it on. We got rid of those tabs and we just have little guide rails now, little guiders, and uh, use a screw to hold it down. So it goes on much easier. Um, but for GRM now, we can plug in a CIM 280 into this controller, CIM 500 if you're doing direct internet connection, and we can get the customer on GRM. There is one big caveat to this that's different. On GRM for this product, it is for monitoring and alarming only. So if you have a dedicated controls or a booster pack or whatever on GRM today, you can go in there and there's a settings tab. You can adjust settings at the station. You can turn pumps on and off. This functionality does not exist with this controller on GRM. However, your customer will still get, um, oops, um, your customer will still get alarms. They can notify, they can acknowledge alarms. They can go in there and get trend curve data for all run times and starts and all that stuff. But if they want to adjust any settings, you cannot do it through the GRM interface on this. If you're not familiar with GRM, it's Grunfuss Remote Management. Get with your DSM. We have a, basically we can put some products to put them where customers can monitor, get alarms and things. Protecting the system. So we have a lot of concerns. We've got Bluetooth. And we've had concerns, okay, kids are out in the neighborhood and somebody gets into this panel and oh, now, they're in, now they're in our pump station. Or they're, they're, you know, some kids are out there playing on their phone and they connect with it and they cause havoc in our pump station. So we have a few ways of protecting the station against that. One is that button I showed you at the beginning. You can hold it down for 15 seconds and it completely disables Bluetooth on the control. But if somebody were still to access it and turn Bluetooth back on, um, they would need a, to have the app. But once they log in, you can the customer can set a PIN code. So just like if you were pairing up with, if you ever used a rental car or even in your car, when you first pair with a device, a lot of them say enter this passcode on the on the screen of your car 
So if you don't have it, you cannot access the station. Um, then once you access the station, the uh, the operator, or excuse me, the customer can set up levels of access for the person logging in. So they can only get to settings or settings and operation. Uh, so we can secure the station in, in a myriad of ways. Once you've connected with the site, it saves the profile, saves that station in your Grunfus Go app. So you don't have to access that button every time. It's only for initial pairing of the device. Talking about some of the applications, and um, I'm pretty good on my time. All right. Um, we're going to open it up for questions here in, in just a few minutes. Um, so we can deal with uh, pressure sewer stations, um, sewage lift stations. I'm going to run through these kind of quick. So empty applications. Great for wastewater discharge stations, stormwater stations, great control system for those, groundwater applications, tank filling. Again, a big thing for us, we're doing tank filling applications now with this controller. Dewatering applications, great, you know, inexpensive panel for those. Now, getting into the price book. So, on the controls and monitoring price list, um, I have this listed out in two pages. So. You've got an LC231 page, which if you look there on the voltage, it shows you the current ranges of each model. But you can see a simplex version of that, pretty expensive, so just the only uh, about $700 list, which is really inexpensive. The Duplex 865 list, uh, and, you, and you get your discount on that. So it's very inexpensive for that, from that standpoint, just doesn't handle a whole lot of current. Um, the LC241, we have a little bit more. I'm going to go to the next page here. So the LC241 modular panel, if you look at the top, there's a top simplex and then duplex below it. The top row, both simplex and duplex, is our single phase capacitor start panel for our SCGs. All right, that is for that, uh, excuse me, for that two horsepower SCG. That's the only thing that that's designed for. Um, simplex and duplex. Then below each one of those, you see six options. <laughs> But if you look at the voltage, um, you'll see like the top three say 208, 234, 60. Then you see the ones at the bottom that have 575 volts. That is for our Canadian variants. Okay. So, because um, we also support Canada with this product, they can order that variant to go up to 575 volts. And technically, you could order if, if you needed that one in a pinch and there wasn't a stock or availability of the other ones, you could order. If it was 460, you could order that box. The thing about those 575 volts is the phase monitor is not hooked up in those. The reason for that is because the product was designed to handle up to 480 volt applications, not 575. So just note, if you ever had to get one of those in a pinch, I don't recommend ordering those for the US market unless you need 575. Uh, but stick with the 208, 234, 60 volt applications. Um, and the other thing is at the bottom, the optional accessories. Now, these are standard accessories that we put together. They're the I.O. manual and everything like that. But how do we price them out? Well, that's where this link comes in. This is a link to our configurator, which I'm about to show you. Just note, if you are in our price book online and uh, you're in the view mode, this link is not, you can't click on it. It's a view only on, on the online. You have to download the price book. Then the link comes uh, live click on it. What it does is it takes you to this Excel sheet here. And this Excel sheet um, is a configurator for the LC panels. <clears throat> now this is for custom. You don't need to do this for standard. So you can select the number of pumps, voltage, current range, and then down here are your options. These are the standard options that we have, customizable options, intrinsic barriers, and ETMs, and uh, the Yeoman seal fail relays. Since the Yeoman's pumps are, I think, going away pretty much. Um, that can also be for a variant. We're going to change the description on this, and, and the link will just be updated online. You don't have to worry about it, but we're going to put in a varying resistance seal fail. So, like, if you were using this panel range on something besides Grunfuss pumps that had a varying resistance seal probe, which is what the majority of other pump companies use, we're kind of unique in the way we do our seal fail. Um, you can also use that option to monitor.
then an hour for the enclosure to get a little bit bigger. And then at the end of the day, it gives you sit at the bottom. And you just use your standard multiplier, which is uh, I, I don't I don't know what it is for you guys, but whatever you get on controls is your multiplier, and that's your cost. So when you go to submit the order, um, you submit it to the, either one of those, uh, depending on I guess you guys are GCD. Submit the order with either a screenshot or an attached um, of this file right here, and that's all you got to do. If you're looking for any variants or, or options outside of what's listed here, so let's say I want to generate a receptacle. Um, that's a custom adder, and we can do it. You just need to contact the CSC and ask for a custom. Say, I need an LC241, this model, but I need it with this. And they'll get you a quote pretty quick. There's also a stainless steel option there on the uh, list. <laughs> Um, stock report. So starting today, actually, you should have seen this in your uh, biweekly stock report of what we have in inventory for pumps. And now we're also going to list control panels. That's because this panel range is stocked in Allentown. We have this many, as of this morning, this many of each variant in stock in Allentown today. So if you needed a uh, certain variant tomorrow, you could get it. Now, our inventory levels right now, are they look a little low. That's because this product started moving here in the last few weeks, uh, quite a bit more than we anticipated. So, um, which is great, but we, I, I'm bumping up the inventory levels right now. Actually, I've already we've already had a discussion, so there will be plenty of these. We're looking between 10 and 15 of each unit on the shelf. Uh, probably not to put them on your shelf because it's a it's a you know universal panel. You can use it pretty much every, everywhere. Um, but we have these available on the shelf. So theoretically, if you lost a uh, needed a panel overnight, you get it in in time. You can get these things shipped overnight to you. Turnkey panel, sales demo unit. Um, so we have these uh, LC two thirty one demo units. Now the interface is the same as the two forty one. The reason we use the two thirty one is because it's a smaller package, got the starters and stuff, and so it's easy to transport around. What we did on this demo is we put in, uh, we wired in buttons on the right hand side to simulate digital inputs, like from a float or whatever you want to do. Uh, we got simulation for thermals and seals, LED indication, and a knob for adjusting an analog or a level or whatever you want to simulate. List price on these is $833, so your cost is going to be around $500. Bucks. We've got 12 of these that will be in stock. Uh, they were already ordered, but with Corona going on, I don't know if that's been delayed at this point. Um, but it will be in stock in Allentown, and you can order them for your sales team. We also have six of these available for training, that we have trained the trainers that have been out. And I know I've been out and done trainings with these boxes. Um, but to be completely honest with you, if you get one of these sales demos, which I recommend everyone that's going to sell this product get one, because you can show the customer the interface and all that, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Once you've logged into the product, it's really easy to understand. Um, never walk through uh, just a basic app. It's very simple to, to walk through. We have a trade show demo. Um, this is, again, the LC231. It just doesn't have the modular panel, but it's small. This panel, it looks real big, but this thing's only about three feet wide, about just maybe three feet tall, maybe, maybe actually not as wide. But it's made out of aluminum and plastic, so it's really light. You can, one person can carry this thing. But what's cool about it is on the outside, it looks like a, uh, a lift station. kind of has that corrugated look. And then on the inside, it's got LEDs that go up and down to simulate water level. And that area I have circled there has a, a demo button where you can push and let it fill up and pump down automatically. It's a really good eye-catching thing at trade shows. Um, or you can turn it off and do adjustments manually and you know, log into it, show customer how it works and all that stuff. If you want to get this, I know trade shows are pretty well dead right now. You've got to contact your DSM if you want to reserve it. Um, we're going to cover the cost of shipping of this going out, and then you just be responsible for it coming back. Final thing, uh, information. Grunfist Product Center has all this information on these products, but so does our website, us.grunfist.com. So we got wild diagrams, brochures, manuals, INOs, all that stuff. But what the one thing GP Grunfist Product Center does not have that our website has are the specifications for the LC231 and LC241. So if you need specifications for those products, go to our website and get them off of there, us.grunfist.com. Uh, 
Uh, and then we also have the GTI, Grunfus Technical Institute. We have a, an introduction training to this product on there as well. So, all right. I know I just flew through that and uh, it kind of went over time a little bit. So I'm going to unmute everybody right now. Uh, I don't, I see one question in the box. So I just unmuted, so you're still muted, but I think you can, if you want to ask a question, just unmute yourself. Uh, then you can ask the question. What are the max horsepower for these? So um, that's the question that was typed in over here. And uh, the max horsepower uh, at the 32 amps at uh, 460 is like 25 horsepower. So that on the LC2, 41. And um, um, add ETOs. What's the? I, I'm, I'm not familiar with the ETO. Dennis, I don't know if you, if if you're unmuted, if you can ask. I don't know what that is. Oh, <laughs> ETOs. Okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah, that's many time it is. That's on our configurator as an option right here. Uh, if you see right there, last time meter right there. I said estimated, elapsed time meter, sorry. Yeah, so that's an option right there. You just check it. It's not a standard function, but if a customer wants it, they can, they can go in here. And, and, and custom variants of this product are going to run about four to five week delivery. Um, we have been having a lot of people asking about intrinsic barrier options. That and, and on a commercial side, they can't wait the five, you know, three to or excuse me, four to five weeks to them. So I already started the discussion with the panel shop on this, but it's having these variants available, <clears throat> kind of pre-built by eighty percent, and then as they get ordered for intrinsic barriers, being able to ship them out about one to two weeks. Uh, so just adding the barriers and shipping them out. Uh, and we're not we're not stocking each intrinsic barrier applications is if you look at the like the configurator I have here up on the screen we have a, a intrinsically safe option for four and five float and then a transducer option there are big price differences between those so if you're not using a submersible transducer we don't want to put that in there as standard because the analog barrier is far more expensive than a ball float barrier um, but we're going to monitor as these products are being sold. And if we do need to start stocking variants, we have no problem doing that. But I think what might be the solution is to have these kind of shells ready to go, pre-built, and just depending on what you need, I need a four float configuration, boom, we plug in the intrinsic barriers and out the door goes. Um, so. Um, right, let's see here. Don't see any more questions coming in. If you have any other questions, just type down or you can unmute yourself. Um, yeah. So, all right, I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, awesome. Well, I, you know, look, I appreciate everybody hopping on here on a Friday. I know, I know everything's really chaotic right now in the world and, uh, you know, it's just um, it's unfortunate, but I think we'll all, well, I know we'll, we'll all pull through this, and uh, I hope you and your family are doing well, and you guys have a great weekend, and um, yeah, any questions, you know, reach out to your DSM, and um, 